Bitcoin is not anonymous. Despite all of the dramatic headlines saying that hackers anonymously used some scary hacking thing on the deep web that involved Bitcoin, this cryptocurrency was never truly designed to be anonymous. It uses a blockchain technology, so every transaction is actually public. It has less privacy than if you were using a bank. You can see every wallet that's involved in a transaction and you can see how much was given or received all the way back to when the Bitcoin was first mined. So if you use the same Bitcoin wallet for all of your transactions and you tell somebody what your wallet ID is, like you would if you wanted them to send you some Bitcoins, then they can look on the blockchain and see every transaction that you've ever made. And so can anyone else who connects your wallet address to you. Now, that wasn't such a big deal back when the only people who had Bitcoins were actually obtaining them in ways that wouldn't necessarily connect their personal information to them. Like if you were mining the Bitcoins directly or if you were selling items anonymously on the deep web. And of course, you can have multiple Bitcoin wallets. In fact, this is what I assume the people who were selling drugs on the Silk Road were doing. They most likely had one wallet they, they would use for receiving the payments for their supplies on the Silk Road, and then they would slowly over time siphon funds away from that to other wallets that uh, aren't necessarily associated with the Silk Road stuff. But these days, most people are buying their Bitcoins from sites like Coinbase or Binance that actually ask you for your personal information when you set them up. And these sites are also often used for creating the Bitcoin wallets. So when you use these, your personal information is going to be collected and then it's going to be connected to every transaction that you make from there on out. So that hash that identifies your Bitcoin wallet, it could be looked at as John Smith. And if the wallets of everyone else that John Smith transfers Bitcoins to are known, then a full profile of John's spending and receiving habits can be known. If your wallet is managed by these companies, there's also a possibility that the account could be frozen if the government requires the crypto exchange to do so. And this is likely to happen if, for example, your wallet is suspected of being involved in fraud or money laundering, the IRS or whatever other relevant alphabet agencies to that infraction could just send an order to freeze your account to prevent any more transactions. Now, these crypto exchanges, they don't just collect your personal information because they want to or for any personal gain on their end. They are actually required to because of the know your customer rule which applies to other financial institutions like banks, lenders, and stock brokerages. And the reason for it is so that all transactions are going to be tracked in case the government wants to audit them for tax purposes or suspicion of some type of criminal involvement. Now, despite all of this regulation and data collection that exists around Bitcoin, there actually are some ways to obtain the cryptocurrency and use it anonymously. One way is through the website Local Bitcoins. So this site works kind of like a Craigslist for Bitcoins. It's possible to find people who are willing to sell Bitcoins for cash payments in person or using any other anonymous form of payment. And of course, if you trade cash or something else that doesn't require your personal details like a credit card for crypto, then there will be no paper trail. Nobody is going to know that you have those Bitcoins besides the person who actually transferred them to you. And of course, you can give an alias for this transaction. You're not required to show that person ID or really tell you tell them your real name. So ultimately, those Bitcoins you're getting are anonymous. Now, meeting with somebody to buy Bitcoins in person might seem a little sketchy, which brings us to the next option. Crypto ATMs. So these work a lot like real ATMs. They allow you to exchange crypto for cash without having to show ID or get involved with humans in any way. 
Uh, and they also let you do the reverse. They let you exchange cash for crypto. Uh, most of the ATMs are two-way transactions. So they allow you to do both, but some of them are only one-way transactions. So you do have to figure out what kind of ATMs are near you first before you actually go to buy or sell Bitcoins at them. But these ATMs are usually located in fairly public places. They're often found in malls or they're found near real ATMs. So there is a possibility of you being seen on a security camera or something like that. But of course, you could wear a hoodie and you could even wear a mask because that's commonplace these days. It's not even you know, going to attract any attention. So if you're really paranoid about being tracked, that's an option for you to conceal your identity. Uh, these Bitcoin ATMs don't actually require you to show ID or anything like that. Uh, basically, they just have you scan a QR code, usually from your phone, but it could be on a piece of paper as well. And that's going to be the wallet that you actually want to send the coins to. And then you pay with cash and then the coins, they get sent off. Now, you might be wondering, how do I get a Bitcoin wallet in the first place to transfer these funds to that is anonymous if all of the crypto exchanges that are creating the wallets for me require my personal identification to create it. Um, so obviously those exchanges aren't going to be an option for a Bitcoin wallet. So what we'll want to do is just create one on our own. And there's several different websites that can act as wallet generators. Uh, this is an example of one called bitaddress.org that contains some open source JavaScript code on it for you to create your unique wallet address. You can basically move the mouse around and that's just adding a bunch of random entropy to it so that it can actually create a random uh, unique Bitcoin wallet for you. So you can just navigate there in your browser. Uh, of course, if you want to remain especially anonymous, then you can access the site over Tor and you can also access it from a Tails USB so that your hardware is anonymous as well. Um, and that way it's gonna prevent any search engines or even your ISP from knowing that you actually went to bitaddress.org. And you can go even further by right clicking on the web page and then downloading its HTML and then you can run it in your browser without any Wi-Fi connected. So because you already have the JavaScript and anything saved. So basically you're running it locally in order to create your wallet. And when the script is done, you'll be brought to a page like this that gives you the private key for your Bitcoin wallet so that you can actually access it and the public key that you would give to other people so that you can receive funds to it. And this wallet was created without any of my personal information. Uh, you guys could even use it if you want, because obviously the public and private keys are right there. Although I wouldn't advise it because everyone else also has the private key. Then to send Bitcoin to others anonymously, you pretty much just have to avoid your personal information uh, getting connected to your Bitcoin wallet. So for example, if you were to order something online your Bitcoin address is going to be on the receipt of your whatever product you bought next to your name and your address. So that's obviously going to connect your wallet to your personal info and unmask you. Uh, it's also a good idea for any friends that you might want to transfer Bitcoin to to follow the same procedures for generating an anonymous wallet because it's the government's insistence on connecting personal information to wallets and then having all of those transactions be tracked that make Bitcoin such a bad choice for a privacy coin in the first place. Now, maybe you're wondering, what should I do if I already bought Bitcoins through an exchange that collected my information? Is there any way that I can transfer these coins to an anonymous wallet uh, without leaving any trail back to myself? Technically, there will always be a record of you having those coins, because again, that's just how the blockchain technology works. And obviously, if you bought them through Binance, then your personal information was given, so that's connected to you. But a Bitcoin mixer can create a buffer between that public transaction or that transaction that had your personal details attached to it and then make it look like you didn't actually transfer the Bitcoin to the wallet that you did. So the way that this works is you send your Bitcoins into a mixer 
which really is just a collection of thousands or hundreds of thousands in some cases of wallets that all belong to the bot that is behind the mixer. And in some cases, mixers will transfer to other mixers as well. So this can scale as much as you need it to. So your transactions go in, say maybe it's for five Bitcoins, and then it's broken down into many smaller transactions. It might be one Bitcoin or it might be a hundredth of a Bitcoin. You know, you can break them down uh, many, many times over. And they're gonna be sent back and forth between all of these different wallets that belong to the bot. And in some cases, they might even be mixed with real transactions from other users. Like maybe somebody wanted a tenth of a Bitcoin. So your tenth of a Bitcoin was actually sent to that user. And then the tenth of a Bitcoin that was originally meant for them is going to be sent to you. So everything is just getting mixed up. That's why it's called a mixer. And then eventually a few of the wallets of the mixer will ultimately pay the amount that you put into it to whatever wallet you intended for it to go to. So this way, if somebody tries to track that transaction, when they go to look at the blockchain, they're going to see all of these other transactions that were inside the mixer. That's gonna make it real difficult to track the coin and figure out where it actually went. So the best option though for using an anonymous crypto is to just use one that was actually designed anonymously from the ground up like Monero. So Monero was designed using a technology that allows it to work on the blockchain without actually giving away people's wallet addresses or their transaction amounts. And it also has a built-in mixer functionality that works just like the mixers that can be used for Bitcoins. And Monero is such a good privacy coin that the IRS is actually offering a $625,000 bounty to anyone who is able to formulate a process for tracing it. So obviously, this is going to be the best cryptocurrency out there for privacy since the government is trying to put this much effort into defeating it. So now you know how to use crypto anonymously. Enjoy making transactions free of any spying eyes.